everybody. Today, we're going to answer the question that came in from one of you beautiful students of how to reduce anxiety when swimming. Great foundational question on the roadmap to your swimming dream. So let's dive in and answer this question. I'm going to give you three steps to consider about reducing your anxiety while swimming. Before I do that, let's go over and think about a really easy thing that many of us learned as kids, which is stop, drop, and roll. Did anyone learn that? Stop, drop, and roll? This was a three-step process to put flames out if you're on fire. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to give you three steps today. We're going to stop. How am I gonna put the fire of anxiety out? <laughs> I'm gonna feel and I'm gonna get curious. So step number one, I need to stop and just notice the anxiety. I have to actually stop, okay? Usually what happens when people are feeling anxious is they are just going, 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 going. If you wanna make a change, right? you're driving along and you want to change directions, you got to stop or at the very least slow down before you make a change. So if you want to make a change in your anxiety and swimming, step number one is we just have to stop. Step number two is to feel it. What? No, I don't want to feel anxiety. I don't like anxiety. All right. Avoiding feeling whatever it is that you're feeling is going to hold it in place. It keeps us stuck in it. We have to stop and feel it. Did you know that feelings only last? When we truly are present in them, we truly drop into feeling them, they only last about 60 to 90 seconds. Can I feel something for 60 to 90 seconds? This is something that the better we get at doing that, the better we get at doing life and swimming. So this is one of the reasons why I practice cold water dipping is to practice on purpose the feeling of discomfort. It's not comfortable getting into that cold water, but I practice it on feeling to remain in this stop mode, to show myself I can feel it. It's not the end. This is essential. Because feeling as emotion lasts for about 60 to 90 seconds. Hmm. How long does our breath last? Somewhere, most people, it's like 30 to 90 seconds. So somewhere in here, there's a problem in that equation, right? I, it isn't just about completely zenning out, waiting for the 90 seconds to go away, and then doing something. Mm, that can be a problem in swimming. When I'm doing my cold water dipping, when I'm doing it out of the water, when I don't have this breath component, yes, I can practice the full being in the 90 seconds. This is where it's essential that when you're learning to swim, you have to start with these foundational pieces on the roadmap to learning to swim. If we're putting it into the mix of way advanced things that come later, like treading water and front crawl and these sort of optional fun things that come after you have your foundation, we have to really work on this mental part, the understanding anxiety and feeling over here in the foundational piece so that we're doing it in a place where, yeah, I can be in the feeling and I still have air easily accessible to me. Hint, hint, that usually means in the shallow end to start with breaking things down simple. Those are other topics. I'm gonna keep this focused. So we have number one is to just stop. Number two is to feel, is to be in it, be willing to feel. This brings us home into our body. And then number three, we get curious. We want to be in a space where we can ask ourselves some questions like, what am I worried about? Again, we're not doing this in the middle of the deep end. There, we're just getting out of it, doing whatever it takes to get out of it. We're doing it in part of our foundational learning. We want to practice and understand anxiety ahead of time. What is it that I'm really worried about? 
Is there actually a problem right now? Most of the time, we are worried about a future thing. Even when I say, ah, oh, we can hold our breath for 30 to 90 seconds, we still have 30 seconds. Are we already out of breath or we're just on the way to it? It's a small nuance difference. Yes, I'm going to do something, but grounding in right now to notice and being able to feel actually right now, it's not a problem. And if you're feeling anxious beforehand, before you even put your face in the water, before you're even doing anything, ah, this is the time to practice. Hmm, okay, what am I worried about? I'm worried about in the future, I'm not going to have air. Okay, now I can solve for that. I'm gonna set myself up so that I always do have air easily accessible to me. Anxiety started to come down. Oh, but some of it is still there, right? Getting curious. I got to come in and get curious. Is there a problem right now? Or am I thinking about a future problem? And then we want to see what is the smaller step? Or could I do the step I'm on right now a little slower? This helps us bring in the information. This helps us to be able to understand anxiety while we're working on the physical skills of swimming. When we're just working on the physical skills and we're not giving attention to the anxiety side of it, this anxiety side is gonna keep on mounting. We have to stop and we have to feel it. It's a part of our journey. Then we come in and get curious at how to take care of that anxiety, to see if there's something it needs or to see if I just need to be learn to be in the practice of coming into the present moment where there's not a problem and stop being so future focused. Hey, if you're ready to get on your roadmap, to get that roadmap for your swimming journey, grab it in the link, come on in, let's get you on your way. Figuring out the foundation and taking care of and having fun exploring the more advanced things. Aloha.